Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us on The Sweet Spot. It's Bruce Millington and Steve Palmer from The Racing Post with our weekly golf show, looking back on what happened last week and looking ahead to what's going to happen this week. Three tournaments. The Live is back in action. And then we've also got the Honda Classic in America, plus the Hero Indian Open. Steve in form after another nice winner last week, and he almost got the double up. Great tipping, Steve. Most of all, though, great golfing by John Rahm. I mean, wow, the, the body of work this guy's putting together is sensational, isn't it? It jolly well is. Yeah, yeah. You've got to take hats off. You've got to doff caps. Uh, that's five wins in his last nine starts, um, which is a remarkable streak. You have to go back to 1975 for the last time someone won three PGA Tour titles uh, at this part of the calendar year. That was Johnny Miller. Um, you know, so not even Tiger Woods has had a, an early season blast like this. Um, but you know, he did have a lot of luck on the way. It's going to sound like sour grapes coming from us. <laughs> Inevitably, isn't it? I mean, it, but he, he did have a lot of luck on the way, Bruce. Well, I uh, saw um, I saw the one where he smashed it into the grandstand and it ludicrously like just popped about three feet away for Eagle. But I, I, yeah, was there other bits of luck? Two. Well, there was just a lot of loose driving. It was similar to Scotty Scheffler in Phoenix getting away with a lot of loose drives. Um, you know, it always seemed to find a lie, always seemed to find a line to the green. So, uh, yeah, but we, yeah, it, it, it does sound like sour grapes because our grapes are very sour. Uh, it would have been lovely to have had the double. But, um, uh, yeah, we must focus on the positives. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, Max Homer was our hope because uh, Torben Olsen, who we'll come to in a minute, he won uh, earlier in the day in Thailand. And then we were hoping for Max Homer. And Homer started the final round three shots behind and actually led with about four shot, four holes to play. But. Unlike John Rahm, who was getting away with loose driving, Homer hit a bad drive and paid the price, didn't he? But still a fantastic week. And he's such a dude, isn't he? So nice. Like his comments afterwards, he really heaped praise on Rahm. And what a yeah. great sportsman. I wish more sportsmen like Max Homer, don't you? I do. I do. He's, he's such a gritty character now, isn't he? His, his temperament is absolutely superb. And you're right, he was struggling off the tee on Sunday. You know, he, he likes to hit this this cutty drive, you know, a power fade, but it, it, it wasn't cutting. A lot of misses to the left, and that made it very difficult for him. You know, his iron playing is fantastic, and it, and it was on Sunday. His putting was strong all week. There's, there's clearly nobody that puts the Riviera Greens better than Max Homer these days. And, Do you um, like the little thingy? Uh, well, well it, 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 it certainly works. I mean, yeah, I've never tried all that business. Yeah, you know, when they're doing the aim point technique and, and testing mm. it with their feet and that, I, I've never done that. I think playing partners would get wound up if we did that in a casual amateur game, wouldn't they? Yeah. But, um, it, you'd look it, a tick, really wouldn't fun. you? I mean, if you just did that <laughs> on your normal golf course, you'd look ludicrous, wouldn't you? You would, because you're almost certainly going to miss. Yeah, we tend to miss, don't we? But, you know, he does all that business and then he, he tends to get it in the hole. Yeah, he a fantastic part. And he, he's confident he's going to win that tournament one day. because he, he got very emotional afterwards. Mm -hmm. in the media because when he won this tournament in 2021, there was no spectators there, really, because of, of COVID-19. So, um, you know, he didn't have his family and friends with him, whereas on Sunday they were all there and he was desperate to win it in front of them. But he says he's going to win it one day and it'll be popular next year for sure. Absolutely. Uh, Keith Mitchell hung around with the big boys for the final group both uh, days over the weekend and, and hung on in there quite well till late on. Was that just basically the fact that he was wearing a visor, Steve? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The visor and the fact he'd only won once before. I mean, he was heady company for him, wasn't he? he he's, a, he's a great player. He's got, you know, he's, he's booming it past John Rahm, you know, most of the time. He's, he's got loads of power, loads of game, but yeah, he just, just wobbled at the end there. And um, that, that, that tends to be what he does. Remind us what the issue is with the visor again. Uh, You've just, just seen yeah. a correlation, basically, haven't you, between weak finishers and visor wearers, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, they just look stupid, don't they? And um, yeah, I, just, I, I don't see how you can look in the mirror before a round with a visor on and, 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 and feel like a champion. Yeah, it's just a pathetic, pathetic piece of clothing. It's like flimsy. And then you'd be a, I've noticed flimsy performance from the, from the wearers. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a there's another potential apparel link in the other tournament, which we're about to come on to. We better talk about Tiger Woods. Um, very, oh, very it, gritty yeah. to, to make the cut by one. Uh, let himself down a little bit with a very puerile gag, which got picked up on. But most of all, what a fantastic comeback. You know, very competitive, played really well. And there's life in the old dog yet, I'd say. I thought it was an amazing performance. You know, you just the God-given talent in those magic fingers of his is, is, is never going to go, is it? Because you know his, his body is a complete wreck. You know, I, I I assumed he'd missed the cut in the in the biggest field. You know, the best field we've had all year. I I, I was certain he'd missed the cut, and he he made it by a shot. And it's because he's just got that 
that feel. You know, you're never going to lose that feel, is it? Yeah, Max Homer said last week in his media conference before the event, if he has two weeks off, Max Homer, he says he feels really rusty when he comes back. It takes him ages to get going again. Tiger Woods takes months off. You know, his body doesn't allow him to do anything. And then he just comes out at Riviera and, and, and performs like that. I, I just think it, it, it was another feather in his cap last week. You know, he's got not got much room for any more feathers. You know, what a, what a sportsman. No, it is a very feathery cap. Um, <laughs> and I've got to say as well, we must give props to the Sky Golf team, who I'm sure they don't watch the sweet spot and, and hear us last week moaning about their sort of lacklustre ambling their way from one into a broadcast to another but they seem to really be back on it this week yeah yeah there did seem to be a bit more enthusiasm and yeah a bit more up for it yeah yeah maybe they do maybe they do maybe they would just give them that little tickle up the backside and they, they did the business but yeah it was it was it was a good vibe last week and it was mm. it was all very jolly wasn't it it uh, certainly was that long but, may but, continue. I mean, when will we see uh, big johnny ram next uh good question good question yeah 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 i mean the, the fact we have back to back um, elevated events was always going to, re- you know, result in a dip afterwards. So yeah, I'm not sure. Sorry, I should know that. I'm, I'm not right. sure, but so That's yeah, right. yeah. Th- there's no big guns involved at all this week. No, but he's going to be very, very short when he comes back, isn't he? Now because he's just so dominant. So we, we're going to. Well, be... yeah. Each each way bets on John Rahm just don't fail anymore. This is the crazy thing, you know. He, he's he's um he's just always in the places, isn't he? If you mm. bets a top eight. Mm, absolutely. Okay. Don't forget, if you enjoy the sweet spot, we would love you to like, subscribe. What's the other one? Share and comment. That's it. I'm so rave. rubbish at that. What about I rave? wish they did. Uh, yeah, I wish they did a version of eat, sleep, rave, repeat with yeah, like, repeat. share, comment and subscribe. Yeah, I'm we sure they rave won't. reviews. I mean, what rave reviews? We'd, yeah, well, no, we want people to tell it as they see it. If they think it's rubbish, then oh. we have to take it on the chin, Steve, don't we? But we do oh, get no, nice very, comments, very generally, nice. so. Yeah, we got some lovely comments this week. We had a comment from Andrew Waterson, by the way, who said, lads, have you watched the full swing yet? I binged on it. Ah. Um, I started watching it last week and I got 10 minutes in and got absolutely bored senseless. It was just Spieth and Thomas just sort of hanging out together and having very, very dull chats. I'm sure it will get better and I will get a go, but I'm a little bit scarred with these things because... Recently, I watched one, a Sky documentary called The Deadline Day, and it was all about, you know, the, the summer transfer window. And I promise you, if it had been, they had about half an hour's content, they dragged that into four one-hour shows. And yeah. I think that's what they do these days. They get the material and they think, right, okay, how much can we spin this out for? And yeah. just getting that kind of vibe with full swing. But I'll give it a go. Are you planning on watching it? I'm hearing you and agreeing with, with most of what you said there. Yeah, I thought the first episode was really, really dull. Um, yeah, I think maybe they were setting the scene for the the non-golf watchers. You know, we're talking about what a par is and how many yeah. holes you play and all that. So hopefully they've got that out of the way and things will get better. I've watched two episodes so far and the Brooks Cook one was, was much more interesting. Oh, OK. So um, I'll stick yeah. with it, will I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had a lovely contrast between Scheffler. I actually watched that one with my lady wife and she's in love with Scotty Scheffler and she loved the way Scotty Scheffler was treating her, her, her um, his wife. And you had the contrast of Brooks Cook. What's she called? Yeah. Meredith. Meredith, yeah, they had a lovely relationship, Meredith and Scotty, whereas Brooks um, didn't seem remotely interested in, in talking to his wife. They, they, they did a very clever little contrast of the two different characters. Um, yeah, yeah, I think okay. you enjoyed the second episode. Right, eh? Well, you certainly enjoyed the Thailand Classic, didn't you? Because oh. Torbjörn Olesen won it by half the track. Fantastic performance by him. A beautiful, as you say, you said it was a nice looking course, Steve. What a beauty that place was. That's on our list as well for when we strike it big. I mean, like, having to get a boat across the 17th green, yeah. that's just, that's magnificent, isn't it? We need more of that. That was really good. But great tournament, great performance by Olison, great tip by you, 22 to 1 winner. Fantastic. Congratulations for that. What was your main take out there? Well, what a brilliant front running performance from Olison. You know, he, he is a fantastic front runner. You know, he started with a two shot lead on Sunday and went birdie, birdie from the gates. He was bogey free for the entire weekend. He dropped only three shots all week. So, yeah, this is a 33-year-old with seven DP World Tour titles in the bag now. Class act at this level. Former world number 33, finished sixth on his Masters debut. So, yeah, I'm delighted to see Thunder Bear getting his career back on track after some off-course issues. Mm, excellent. Uh, your other main tip, the barn rat, was a bit naughty, wasn't he? He started off, he was giving us all sorts of hope, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. He lost, yeah. He, he lost the plot. <laughs> he did, he ran out of steam. I mean, I don't know, he's not... He's not in the. He's one of the few golfers in, who's in worse shape than me. And I mean, maybe he just um, he ran out of steam, and, and it was a shame. And he's a visor wearer, of course. We took a chance on a visor wearer there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought Mr. Nappy played well. I must mention him. My my um my son's delighted with Alexander Nappy. 
one of my oh, son's right. favourite players. When I say Mr Nappies comes on the screen, he gets all excited. He likes oh, Mr Nappies. Um, oh, okay. But the, yeah, that, that, it was a great tournament. My only gripe about last week, Bruce, you, I don't know how much you watched of it, but the amount of times the erectile dysfunction advert came on. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like every single one, and it, oh, was, really? it, was, it was half term week last week. So, all, you know, I, 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 the golf is <laughs> the golf's always on in my house. The golf's always on in my house. I'm sitting down for breakfast with my kids in, each morning, and then flipping that comes on. How is yeah, that not? That should, it should be watershed. Yeah, it? you're right. That that poses all sorts of awkward questions, doesn't well, it? Well, exactly. I, I I just started talking manically whenever it came on. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 what's your favourite animal? I like elephants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because. Yeah, call me old fashioned. I don't want to be discussing erections at the breakfast table with my kids. No. Did either post- of them say what is erectile dysfunction? Well, no, because I, I was really on my game. What you, know, you, you say? Yeah, you just don't want that discussion, do you? No, you don't. God, no, no. they should put that. No, that should be a, there should be a watershed there for that. I need it? to complain to points of view or something, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. but I don't. Is that still around? No. I've got to do it's something. Not. Honestly, no. I'm really, yeah, it's, it's so ridiculous to that. Um, yeah, I'm on edge yeah. as the adverts come on. It, yeah, that isn't good, is it? Blimey, you, you'd have been begging for a Rolex advert, wouldn't you? To get yeah, because yeah. it's a long advert. It's, it's two little models that start doing things. Oh, they dance. They've got that. They dance, it's they quite dance, a good advert, dance. isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's like it's an advert sort of that would play. get a kid's kids attention yeah yeah it's, it's, exactly yeah of course so they think it's an advert for some sort of toy and then all of a sudden she puts her hand on his buttock and leads him to the bedroom yeah it's pure yeah. Phil. yeah you're right actually yeah no that that's not good that no it's a very no, good I point i did enjoy the this, thailand classic i did enjoy the thailand classic but i also had a lot of problems along the way yeah it sounds like it well well done tipping the winner and uh, we were talking about shorts and long trousers and you 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 you're not having shorts on the golf course and you thought that olsen you know, one of the reasons he won it was because he, he he wore classic long slacks, didn't he? Yeah, dressed as a professional, played as a professional. <laughs> <laughs> Shorts are just not taken it seriously, is it? Yeah, I, yeah, if you look good, if you look like a champion, you play like a champion, I, I can assure you. Right, should we look ahead now? Three tournaments as we live and breathe. Mm. And before we do that, I want to give a shout out to a great new feature starting this week in the Racing Post. Because, you know, hopefully you're aware that we do these nice big price grids that give you the player and all the all the odds so you can compare the prices, compare the each ways. We've also got a new feature starting this week where Steve will be giving us a comment on each of the leading contenders in that box. So you don't just get the player, their form, their three year form, their main attributes, whether they're good drivers, putters or got a good touch, all the prices. But you also get a bespoke comment from Steve on each of the players. That's for both of the main tournaments, and that's in the Racing Post newspaper. Or if you are a Members Club subscriber, you can get that at 9 o'clock the night before, delivered straight to your device. So, great new feature, that, Steve. Are you enjoying doing that? I mean, obviously, a bit more work for you, but you don't mind, do you? You know me. I love work. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it would be, um, be useful for punters, that. Yeah, I think it will. So, that starts this week. So, we've got three tournaments. We'll start with... The Honda Classic in America, where after week after week after week of quality, all of a sudden it just drops a little bit. But that's fine. We've had loads of great tournaments. So here are the latest prices. Most of the big guns have taken the week off, but Sun JM never takes a week off. And he is being rewarded for his persistence with favourite status. He's currently 17 to 2. Shane Lowry, 14. Matt Kuchar, 22. There you go. Matt Kuchar's third favourite. All of a sudden, the quality's taken a drop. You can tell that. Alex Noren, 22. Minwoo Lee, 22. Denny McCarthy, 25. Aaron Wines, 25. Chris Kirk, 25. Billy Horschel, 28. Taylor Pendrith, 30. JT Poston, 33. Adam Svensson, 33. Harris English, 33. Plus a few others. There you go. So it's not, you know, it's not necessarily anything like as good as the tournaments we've had recently, but could be some decent value lurking around there. We shall find out who Steve fancies after he tells us all about the course. The champion course at PGA National, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. 7,125 yards par 70, only two par fives. 144 runners tackling one of the toughest tests on the PGA Tour. Four times at this track. A total of only six under par has been enough to top the leaderboard after 72 holes. You know, loads of water out. It's a bit of breeze in the forecast this week. Thursday afternoon is the peak, I think. Um, but it's sunny, sunny and warm throughout. Draw bias? Uh, possibly. You don't really want to go out on Thursday afternoon. Slight okay. draw bias to be. Yeah, you want to be out early on Thursday. We don't ideally. know the three balls yet, do we? So we haven't no. done the So do check that out. So that could be a factor. 
All right, then, Steve, how many selections have you got? I got two selections. Oh, just the two. Blimey, yeah. O'Reilly. Right then, who's the main man? It's Adam Spenson at 33 to 1, who is made for the champion course at PGA National. Spenson has built a career on accuracy. He's a tidy, no frills golfer. And that's the sort of player we need to be back in at PGA, PGA National. Mark Wilson won the first event at this course, probably the most no frills golfer mm. in, the, in the history of the game. Um, yeah, find your fairways, find your greens, keep your scorecard as clean as possible, grind an under par round if you can. Spenson is perfect for that task. He went to university in Florida. He still lives in Florida. He lives in Palm Beach Gardens. He knows this track like the back of his hand. And this is the venue where his professional career took off. He won the 2015 Web.com Tour qualifying score at the Champions course. And he didn't just win it, he won by seven shots. He made his Corn Ferry Tour breakthrough in 2018. Then he won twice on the Corn Ferry Tour in 2021. So a prolific winner at that level. And, and he's made the upgrade and he's settled in nicely now. The 2022 Honda Classic, last year's Honda Classic, obviously a big opportunity for him. And of course, he knows well, finished ninth, started 65, 69. He, he topped the strokes gained T to green stats, faded at the weekend, finished ninth. Understandable fade early days in his, in his career. Now he returns as a, as a champion. He won his maiden PGA Tour title in November last year, the RSM Classic, two-shot victory, um, and, and and icing on cake, finished ninth last week in the Genesis. Amazing performance in a top-class cool. field. Yeah, $545,000 for a tie for ninth. You know, you get half a million dollars in the bank um, for a solid performance. You know, everything's going well in the world of Adam Svensson. I think he's ready to win this on the classic. Cool. You make a really strong case for Adam Svensson there, Steve. Well done. Thank nice you. one. Who's the other one? The next one is Christian Bazidenhout at 50 to 1. It was quickly shown a liking for PJ Tour events in Florida. The 2020 Arnold Palmer was his first one, finished 18th in that. He was 7th in that event in 2021, 20th last year. So three top 20s at Bay Hill. He was 25th on his Honda Classic debut last year. He's played seven PJ Tour events in Florida, hasn't missed a cut. It's also worth noting that in the uh, 2020 Players' Championship, which was expunged from the record books, um, he finished second after he was second after round one. Um, so, yeah, he's got, he's got a great record in the Sunshine State um, and he's easily good enough to win on the PJ Tour for me. He was second in the John Deere Classic last year. He's a three time winner on the DP World Tour. You know, neat, tidy player. Perfect for this track. Um, and I don't think his A game is a million miles away. A month ago, he finished 11th in the American Express, third round 62. He's been a bit inconsistent, um, but it, it, it'll, get, it'll get that consistency back soon. And last week, a bit of inspiration, had a third round tee time with Tiger Woods. He was he was thrilled to get the chance to play with Tiger Woods. Uh, he, he, he handled it well, shot a level past 71. So things are happening for Bez. President's Cup debut uh, last at the end of last year. First round with Tiger Woods. Uh, you know, I think we're going to get... An, yeah, potentially get another first this week with a maiden maiden PGA Tour title. Brilliant. And just quickly, Sun Im, how, how much do you fear the fab there? I just think he's incredibly short. You know, seven to one in places. You know, it, 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 I know he's a course winner, but he missed the cut there last year and a miserable weekend at Riviera. You talk about him playing every week. Maybe he's running out of gas a little bit. 74-73 at the weekend. So, um, yeah, I think he's too short for me. I can let him win at that price. Um, yeah, Did he get yeah. married recently? He got married, yeah, in the close season. His um, wife yeah. must be sick of this, mustn't she? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he might say to her, "You knew what you were getting into, love. I, you know, I, I do play every week, but you know." That's what I said to my wife. <laughs> 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 I like a drink and a gamble. This has been no secret for a while. You didn't, hide, you didn't hide anything, no. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. So that's really tickled me saying that. I just want to put a bit of icing on the cake of. Um, which of the, uh, uh, the, the, this this whole package, this odds oh, okay. package. Um, interesting stat: only six of the last eighteen Honda Classics have been won by an American. Yeah, you know, internationals you know, have dominated this event. So, yeah, you know, I'm pleased to have a Canadian and a South African on my side. Mm, that is peculiar, isn't it? Mm. Okay, though, let's move across to the uh, Hero Indian Open, which starts early on Thursday morning, uh, and Torbjorn Olsen. He's staying on to try and go back to back. He's 11 to 1 favourite. Nikolai Hogard, 12 to 1. Robert McIntyre, 14. Yannick Paul, 18. Oliver Becker, 20. Juice Loughton, 20. Eduardo Molinari, 22. Jun Hun Wang. He's making waves. He's 22. Uh, Kazaki Higa, 25. And it's 28. But kind of looking at some of the names that 
prominent in the market, Steve. Would I get the impression that this is a fiddly kind of accuracy test, this? You'd get the impression this is really difficult and, and you'd get the impression that this is going to be a week where you're going to look at scorecards on both sides of the pond, uh, so to speak, and uh, they'll just be riddled with double bogeys and triple bogeys. You know, this is going to be a really funny week um, um, and, and just carnage on both sides of the I keep saying the pond, but it's a long way from the, the pond. Yeah, it? it is. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Talk, it's both sides of the Pacific, isn't it? In actual yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's, let's be specific. So a hard so. course. Yeah. Tell us all about it. Oh, uh, <laughs> that was so bad Sorry. at the time, wasn't it? No, hang on a sec. Uh, I can't really spin that out. <laughs> it's such a simple question. But go on. No, I'm back in play. I'm back in play. Well done. Well, it's, it's the signature course at DLF Golf and Country Club, New Delhi, India. 7,380 yards. Par 72, four par five. We've got 132 runners going to post. And course form is from the 2017, 2018 and 2019 Indian Opens. Pretty pretty new track. 2015, it was crafted by Gary Player. And as I say, just super, super difficult. Loads of trouble spots and, you know, grainy, slopey greens. Sweltering hot as well, which adds to the challenge. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's going to handle that 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 test best? Mm. Oh, by the way, I meant to say we, we should give a mention to... Uh, the very sad news last week about John Paramore, the oh, referee who died very yeah. suddenly, didn't he? That yeah, was awful, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Only 67. He was a, a very respected... He was the sort of um, Pierre-Luigi Colina of golf, wasn't he? He was like the, yeah. the king of the golf officials. And there were lots of very touching tributes. You could tell, couldn't you, from all the heartfelt messages from the players that they really re respected him, but also liked him. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And he was what he had a very... He, you could trust him to get it right, couldn't you? And be hard with the players, you know, not roll mm. over. Like, too many mm. of the modern ones just roll over oh, and have the tummy tummy stick. Yeah, you're right, you're right. And they ask for second opinions. Yeah, did Xander Shefali the other day... Xander Shefali did a disgusting one the other day when he he, he claimed an, an animal burrowing. By, his, his ball was right behind the tree and he called in for a referee and said, oh, animal burrowing, burrowing animal. Yeah. And the first referee said, no, bugger off. He called for a second opinion. Second referee came along. So, yeah, fair enough. Got a drop away from the tree. No, that's disgraceful. Got on the green in two at a par five. Yeah. It was an outrage. I mean, yeah. if Patrick Reed had done that, it would have been a lot more talked about it. But Xander Chevalier had a, had, a, had a poor one there. John Paramore wouldn't have stood for that, would he? John Paramore said, you're not getting a second opinion. You take my opinion. You bugger exactly. off. How some. dare they? Mm. I mean, they shouldn't really. The, the referee is the second opinion because your playing partner is your first opinion, aren't they? Absolutely. You make a very good point there. Well, let's hope the spirit of John Paramore lives on with tough but fair referees. Exactly. Anyway, okay. how many selections have you got for the Hero Indian Open? Four! Good one. Main tip? Shubhanka Sharma, 28 to 1, the course record holder at the signature course. Sharma signed for a 64 in the second round of the 2018 Indian Open there. He turned up for that event absolutely knackered. He just contended in the WGC Mexico Championship. He was five over par through nine holes of round one in that Indian Open, battled his way back into the tournament amazingly, finished seventh. And it was course knowledge which helped him do that. He used to be affiliated with the DLF. It was his home track and practice base for, for many a year. I want players on my side this week who know the challenge they're going to face, know where to miss these greens. Every hole is a double bogey in waiting. Uh, Sharma best equipped to, to stay out of trouble. Two-time DP World Tour champion, six-time winner on the Indian Tour, and he's played some great golf recently. Third in the Ned Bank Challenge in November, seventh in the Abu Dhabi Championship in January, twelfth in the Saudi International earlier this month. Last week's track didn't suit him. This one definitely does. You've got a swagger, haven't you? You're seeing the ball nice and big, aren't they? As I, <laughs> I am. I am, yeah. I like it because three tournaments, you know, obviously we're going to get on to our trebles later in the piece. Um, I've just got eight tips across three tournaments. Oh, OK, right then. So who's your uh, big danger here in India? Pablo Larabal, 28 to 1, committed member of the DP World Tour again. He had a brief dalliance with Live Golf, but his future lies in the DP World Tour. And he notched his 400th appearance on the DP World Tour the other day. Uh, he's got a 40th birthday looming large in May. His target now is adding to these seven DP World Tour times. A bit like Ollison. You forget how prolific some of these mm. players are, don't you? Uh, he, 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 his future is, is, is on the DP World Tour. He's buzzing. He's, he's sort of semi-apologised about what he's you know, going to live. Um, and let, let's look at the history of Pablo Larrabal. He's won some okay. really, really good events. I mean, yeah, he, he, and he's shown great bottle. I'd like to make the point that Pablo is a, is a born winner. He fended off Colin Montgomery to win his maiden title, French Open. He beat wow. Sergio Garcia in a, in a BMW International playoff. He had Rory McIlroy and Phil Mickelson breathing down his neck in the 2014 Abu Dhabi Championship, won that. So when Pablo's on his game, 
you know, he fears nobody. He feel like a big fish this week in, in India. Um, and, and it's a course he likes. He was fourth in the 2018 Indian Open at the DLF. Um, you know, he, he won twice on the DP World Tour last year. God. Uh, yeah. You've got me eating out the palm of your hand at the moment, Steve, <laughs> with these cases. They're all so strong. I mean, if you were a yeah. barrister arguing about someone's innocence, I'd be, I, I'd, and I was in the jury, I'd be, yeah, let the guy off, honestly. Right, right then, yeah. third tip. It's, you, you pronounced, pronounced him, you pronounced him really well. It was Jin Hun Wang. Um, when you did well, you your know that, well, you know that w- w- the, the business has a Korean website now. Oh, so you are getting good so, on yeah, that. I'm getting quite good on the old Korean. Yeah, I'm, I, I know how to. I, I don't speak it, but I sort of, you know, I've, fantastic. I, I, I get the hang of it. Yeah, he's interesting. This guy, tell us all about him. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful tale that he's in the process of telling here because yeah, many a Korean career has been ruined by this mandatory two years of military service. You know, Sang Moon Bai, probably the best example, two-time PJ Tour champion who lost the plot after mandatory service. And, and Wang has made no bones about it. You know, they don't get treated any differently, these superstars that come in. He said the military service was basically physical training, shooting guns. He didn't get to play any golf. So he didn't touch a club for, for two years. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it looks like he's going to overcome that setback in, 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 in manful fashion. He wasn't released from the military service uh, until July last year. He started back on the Asian tour, four top 25s in a row, including two top fives. Then he was 28th in the Dubai Desert Classic this year, really encouraging DP World Tour spin. And as you say, in the last fortnight, third in the Singapore Classic, eighth in the Thailand Classic. Yeah, Wang used to be an amazing player. He won three DP World Tour titles in a flash at the start of his career. Rookie of the Year in 2016. Magical short game. If he's getting back to his best, which it seems like he is, he's got to have an enormous chance in this company. Former world number 39, still only 27. That's um, amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And he, he likes India. Second in the 2016 Indian Open, different different track. But yeah, yeah, they're my three main bets this week. I love them. I'll tell you what, Steve, of all the other things old people say, the most absurd to me is bring back national service. I mean, absolutely not. Oh, no, thank you. I would be the most pathetic soldier or cadet, whatever they are. Like, you know, I, <laughs> we do I, need some soldiers, though, don't we? We're low on soldiers. No, 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 no. You come off. Don't give it all that. Now, would you fancy it, national service? Well, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, bring it, bring it back for the kids. What about no. the death penalty? Bring back the death no, penalty. No, absolutely not. Shush, stop it. <laughs> doing right you're undoing all your good work on golf opinions (laughs) all these terrible takes right then you've got one more who you don't particularly fancy by the sound of it well no 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 it's just it's a 250 to one chance um yeah i I just think at that price we'll we'll take a chance on him because it's it's, it's a 250 to one chance that finished third in the south african open just before christmas um and it's jens fairbring oh Jens Fjellbring, Sweden. Um, he got his DP World Tour car back at qualifying school in November, then jetted down to South Africa for that one and banked a really healthy early check. He was beaten by only two shots, if you remember, Arlie, Tristan the Piston Lawrence. Fjellbring, you know, nice, steady player, accurate, tidy. He's won twice on the Challenge Tour. He lost a playoff for the Kenya Open on the, on the Challenge Tour in 2018. So I see him staying out of trouble. He's had one go at this course in the past and he finished 13th. So, um, yeah, I think there's enough to like at those yeah. prices. Yeah, Brilliant. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, you, you get... Who's the best ever golfer whose name ended in Bring, would you say? Um, well, it's actually a Christopher Bring doing the rounds. There now. is. Yeah, I know. And he, he was uh, quite good last week. But it's got to be yeah. D-A-Y Bring. Oh, of course, it? D-A-Y Bring. Yeah, we like a D-A, don't we? D-A <laughs> yeah, points. D-A points and D-A-Y <laughs> Bring. Yeah. 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 Right then. Uh Oh, well, we better talk about the two favourites, I suppose, haven't we? Ollison and yeah. Thorbjord. Yeah, it's almost three, isn't it? Yeah, Thorbjord Ollison, different type of track, you know. I prefer tracks where he can go all out attack, and this certainly isn't that. Uh, Nikolai Hoggard, you know, big test of his temperament. You know, he's a young buck. He gets very warm under the saddle. Um, <laughs> <Does he? laughs> I'm not, I'm not <laughs> sure we'd have the patience for this one. Uh, and then, yeah, McIntyre said, Robert McIntyre says the, the course is going to suit him. He says Stephen Gallagher, who's won at this course, says, has told him that this will suit him. But I, I don't really know what they're getting out there. So he's been proven expensive to follow. So, yeah, I don't know. Like any of the favourites are just like the, the sort of next rung, if you will. Mm, excellent. Right. And so Live Golf is back. It's yes. Live Golf Maya Cobra El Chameleon, which is obviously a regular tour stop. I don't know if it still will be now that it's uh, opened the door to the livers. 
And uh, before we talk about the tournament, Steve, do you want a quick minute silence for Thomas Peters, his defection? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing about... Were you Thomas devo Peters... about that or, or ambivalent? What do you think? No, no, I was disappointed. I was, I was really disappointed because, you know, he's, he's a spectacular player to watch and you're not going to be able to watch him as much now as we get on to because, you know, UK viewers at the moment are, are literally left in the dark. Um, as no. far as live, live golf is concerned, it's not even on YouTube uh, anymore. No, 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 no it's oh, not because they, 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 they've signed up with I think it's CW, some American streaming site. But it, it, you can't get that in the UK. Um, uh, as things stand, I have no idea how we're going to watch this golf tournament. Okay, and I mean maybe guess. there are talks about a last ditch deal and there could be some brinkmanship going on or something. But yeah, I mean that's yeah. not growing the game, is it? It's not going to grow their competition if in one of the golfing hotbeds of the UK you can't watch it. It's silly, isn't it? It's scandalous. It's, yeah, it's disgusting. Mm. Right, OK. Yeah, yeah, Thomas Peters, yeah, got it. Yeah, he, he's, he's, the thing is with Thomas Peters, he's, he's made no bones about it from very early in his career. He don't, he's not a big fan of golf. Don't really like playing Oh, really? Golf. Yeah, yeah. He, he said that He said that from the off, that it's just something he's good at. But um, So, I mean, it, it, I think that's sort of swayed oh, him a little bit. Just, that must be difficult. That, yeah, well, in that case, yeah, that's yeah, the money the tool for people who don't like golfers. Yeah. So, if, yeah. He, if he worked in an office, he wouldn't go and play golf at the weekend or anything? No, no, he, he wouldn't. He'd what's, be he, what's his main interest? He likes snowboarding and, um, you know, the more, more action-packed stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't that surprised. He made a few derogatory tweets about the PGA Tour over the weekend, didn't he? You know, the writing was on the wall there. Um, yeah, I thought yeah. it was a bit of a chicken and egg. I didn't know whether he went to live because he didn't get into uh, the Genesis or he didn't get into the Genesis because they'd got wind that he was going to live. But anyway, I wouldn't he's have been gone based on live. one tournament. No, it would have been brewing for a while, wouldn't it? But uh, yeah, it's such is life. Yeah, and also, Steve, I mean, if that's that's about the limit of the defectors, isn't it, uh, during the close season? There's not too many others, is there? Well, one popped up uh, yesterday in Dean Burmester. That was another surprise. Oh, we can, we can do. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On no, your we can, way, Dean. We can, we can deal with anything. Yeah, that's true. Right, then. Here are the leading contenders for Live Golf Mike Ober, which starts on Friday afternoon. Obviously, only 54 holes, these tournaments. Dustin Johnson, 8-1, to one, along with Joaquin Neiman. And then Cam Smith is 10, Abraham Answer 11, Paul Casey 16, Sergio Garcia 16, Thomas Peters 16, Patrick Reed 18, Taylor Gooch 18, Matt Wolf 20, along with Mito Pereira. And it is 25 to 1 bar. So, Steve, it's the uh, usual kind of format now, isn't it? 48 runners, teams with silly names. Anything, <laughs> any other changes? Are there any tweaks? No, no, there's any tweaks. No tweaks to the cliques. No, 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 no. They're all going. They're all going yeah, I mean, yeah, the teams have been tinkered with a little bit. But uh, okay. who cares? And it's of course we of course we know quite well now, isn't it? Lovely. Yes. Chameleon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a Greg Norman design course, which probably helped in the negotiations. Um, it's seven thousand and sixty-two yards for this three par fives, par seventy-one. You know, tight fiddly. That's a big smirk. I've thought of something. Sorry, can I get it off my chest? <laughs> yeah. if, if they. If the PGA Tour say to them, look, sorry, El Chameleon, you you're not hosting it. Uh, our usual tournament this year because yeah, they will say that. They will say that. And the and and the management at El Chameleon object to it. The PJ Tour can just say, "Well, that's karma, Chameleon." Ah, oh, yes, yes, they can, they can, and they will, and they shall. You should email Fincham, who is that? Jay yeah. Monah Monahan, Monahan. I can never keep up with it, but so uh, yeah, yeah. Email the the big wigs. They'll, they'll like mm. that. Okay, uh, mate. But, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah accuracy and sound calls management is what we're after. Um, and yeah, yeah, the, the 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 bucks are the same. Four million dollars to the winner, twenty million okay. in the pot, five million for the team event, which no one follows until the till the last one. I mean, the Live Golf Team Championship at the end is quite interesting, I think, but the rest of the team golf uh, is rubbish. Okay, right. I think I know how many tips you've got. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Four two two formation. You're absolutely right too. If you four, if, two four two. Yeah. So four. Yeah. So, so four, we've got two. two, two. Yeah. We got two. We got two, and we've only got one set of prices. And I think we're going to get bigger prices on these tips than uh, later in the piece. All right, then, mate. Right, who's going to be the leading fancy this week? It is Wackham Neiman. Uh, eight to one, as I say, is the only price we've seen so far. I'm hoping for bigger. This is a 24 year old at the peak of his powers. You know, the, this is the most dis disturbing aspect of, of of live golf is that you know a few players that have the ability to be absolutely elite on the PGA Tour and playing in those events that we've seen, the, yeah, the elevated events. Yeah, I did, I'm missing Joachim Neiman, I must admit. Yeah, I, I, yeah, the PGA Tour is thriving. He's one of those players I used to love watching. Um, 
and it, you know at 24 years old uh, and improving you know when he left the PGA Tour he, he was he was on the brink of becoming a, you know a top five player in the world for me um and he would have been watching the Genesis Invitational last week John Rahm getting all the plaudits for a 17 under par total 12 months prior of course Neiman shot 19 under par you know an amazing awesome front running performance he's good enough to win anything I think he's desperate to get off the mark on the live golf. You know, they all want to get that first win. I think it could come in my over. Uh, Neiman was 10th in the Saudi International earlier this month. He was fifth then in, a, in an Asian tour event in Oman. And in his last visit to El Camaleon, he finished fifth in the 2021 Worldwide Technology Championship. Um, he was a late comer to live. He's only played in, in four live events as an individual, finished in the top five three times. Um, he's won events in Mexico as an amateur. Um, yeah, I think he, I think Neiman is the man to be on for you know for our trebles, which we'll come on to. Okay, and if it's not going to be Joaquim Neiman, who could it be? It's Abraham Answer, who is eleven to one with the only firm up at the moment. Abraham Answer won the Saudi International in fine style earlier this month. Made hardly any mistakes. He has a rock solid performance. So yeah, the form is assured from Answer, and he's returning to a course he, he knows really well. You know, he always had a lot of pressure on him as a Mexican in that PGA Tour event there. Um, you know, this week he can you know enjoy those home comforts with less less tension in the shoulders. Uh, he was seventh in, in his last El Camaleon start, 2021 Worldwide Technology Championship, and his form figures from his last five starts: uh, El Camaleon nine, 21, eight, 12, seven. Um, it's just an ideal setup for him. So yeah, I've got two really rock solid each way bets there, um, and yeah, I want lots of multiple action as well, if I may. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> We'll come to the multiple action after we've reiterated your tips. Ah. Honda Classic. Honda Classic, Adam Svensson and Christian Bezidenheit. Hero Indian Open. Shupanka Sharma. Pablo Laraba. Jin Hun Wang. Jens Fabring. I'm going to reiterate that that's Larathabal, okay, or Larazabal as it's spelled, because you, you just, you, you don't even close your mouth there, you just produce, you basically produce a series of vowels in between two L's and it's we hard to understand. We should do two sets of tip reiterations, should we? Should I should do my ones and you should do like the, the I can't classic. just do them so that I can, this is the serious <laughs> part of the show, we should be, we used to uh, insist sorry, on being right. solemn for this, do you remember? Oh, we did, I do remember those days. Yeah. Yeah, we go, right, yeah, okay, can you be solemn for your two? Pablo Laraz Abal. Pablo Laraz Abal, Englishman of Raw. Pablo Laraz Abal. Go on, sorry mate. Uh, two I've for the live. Lost my thread. Two for the live. Wackham Neiman otherwise known as Joaquin Neiman and Abraham Answer. Brilliant. All right, Steve, well done. They're really compelling cases there, I must say. Um, obviously, you know, if Steve's kind of, he's in form and he's, I'm going to be a bit preachy here for five seconds, sure. in form and, and, and spitting out some very, very strong cases for his place. But obviously do please remain very sensible with your stake and don't get carried away. Golf betting is a bit of fun. And I know a lot of you did the doubles last week and you had a really nice pace, place play out, but, you know, for a two pound fifty each way double on on some of your on those ones last week, Steve, you got four days of absolute yeah. fantastic fun and suspense and won a few quid. Five hundred and twenty-eight to one. Five hundred and twenty-eight to one. Homer and Ollison, twenty-two God. to one apiece. Yeah, five hundred twenty-eight so to one close. double. Yeah, so close. Never mind. Right then. So, if you were having a, what would your recommended multiple be? Let's say. Well, I think you should have a double. I think you should have a Sharma Spence and double. Okay. I, don't, I don't think it's reflected in the prices how much those two are comfortable on these courses. Um, you know, Sharma knows knows this track like the back of his hand. Spencer knows his track like the back of his hand. Let's just get a couple of hands up there to make that point. Okay. And then and then in Live Golf Mayakoba, let's have Wackham Neiman as our as our man for the for the treble. So have a Sharma Svensson double each way double, and then have a Sharma Svensson Neiman each way treble. I'm going to tell you what that would pay just with the one bookmaker that's pricing up all these up. Uh, Neiman, right? Okay, double. The treble pays eight thousand eight hundred and seventy-three to one. Yeah, that's our that's our ticket to ride. And if you did it each way, the place is quite nice as well. So yeah. Yeah, these are the moments. These are the moments. You know, bookmakers bookmakers <laughs> uh, quiver when there's three golf tournaments because I'm yeah, sure we have, do, the, yeah. we have the we have the potential here to, to do to do things jolly good okay mate any other news <sighs> anything uh exciting you in the coming seven days uh no 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 three golf tournaments head down um yeah let's try and get, get the each way treble obviously you can have in running trebles if things go wrong early you know just mm. take your opportunity it's there for you and ring every little bit out of it okay okay very good advice from graham taylor there 
Right then, Steve, I think that's about it. That's a wrap, isn't it? That's a wrap. We hope for winners and we hope that the erectile dysfunction advert is not used, uh, you know, it's used sparingly this week, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> that's the main thing. OK, right. And thank you very much to Steve. Thanks, as always, to our lovely producer, Will Carey. Most of all, thank you for watching The Sweet Spot. Don't forget, if you do want to leave us a comment, we'd love you to do that. And also, if you enjoyed the show, hit that thumbs up button. Back next week for another Sweet Spot. Mm -hmm.